We've got Shashi Tharoor with us. Uh, what we're trying to get from everybody is uh, two positives and two not so uh, worries in this budget. <laughs> well, I think I'll start. Don't skip with the, the first two. I'll start with the, uh, the negatives, if I might. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Simply because, you know, uh, one had, had some hopes. I think the positives include the women. Uh, and the fact that for once we had a budget uh, finance minister quoting a couplet in Tamil oh. instead of the usual <laughs> collection of fairies. That is such but, a uh, superficial positive to give and get away with it. That's right. <laughs> you asked for two, you got two. But on the negative side, I, mean, a lot of I came in as Amitabh was finishing, so I can't, uh, I'm not sure if I'm repeating anything he's observed, but certainly um, the Prime Minister's statement, this is going to be something that's going to help the arm out me, is astonishing given that there's nothing in it for the Ahmadmi, and in fact, uh, we're going to all now be paying two rupees more for every liter of petrol or diesel, which means we'll have a knock-on effect on everything. If the Ahmadmi buys a shirt or a pair of chappals, it has to be transported from a factory to a market. And all that You're is going to cost more. You have an inflationary she effect. She said right? one liter on cess and one liter on the basic tax. So you're saying it's two liters? That, that two rupees, rupees a liter? Two rupees a liter, right? Because yeah. one is a cess and one is a tax, and either way it comes to a rupee each. So we're already paying the highest uh, fuel rates of the pump in the world. We're going to be paying more. Uh, the arm army will be affected either directly or indirectly. Uh, it's astonishing that health was not mentioned. Ayushman Bharat, for example, such a big song and dance in the interim budget, not a word about it in the main budget. Uh, similarly, with, uh, with the, the Kisan subvention, nothing in the main budget. We assume that's going to continue. We'll have to look at the detailed numbers. Uh, education, uh, very, very little indication of where the resources will go uh, to education. Setting up a National Research Foundation may be all very well, but that's one more thing of the government getting into the academic space and trying to centralize research under its own influence and control. So I can't be Thank you terribly for that, excited uh, about that. Totally it. unbiased account. Well, look, I mean, the fact, <laughs> is that, uh, the fact is that, you know, I was listening hoping there'd be things that one could applaud and no, celebrate. We uh, but, you know, uh, these wonderful aspirational goals, I mean, Vishwas and Akanksha and so on are all very well, but they have to actually be matched with reality. I mean, she didn't mention the macro economy at all. Did she say a word about GDP growth? Uh, tossed in the fiscal deficit number at the very end of her speech. But in fact, the 3.3 she mentioned this year was the one they had mentioned and failed to meet last year when they went up from 3.3 to 3.4 between the budget estimates and the revised budget. So you've got to understand that they, she has inherited a rather poor track record. From the Congress? No, from the last five years of this government. For example, they've never been able to match their uh, revenue projections. Uh, she's basing a budget on a number, but they may not be able to collect that money. Uh, the, the GDP growth figures have consistently been off. And on top of that, now we have all the skepticism about how real those figures are. So it's very difficult to take this at face value and take it on trust.